Y'all can be rowdy today because uh, we're not going live. Well, it's going to be recorded, so I guess it goes out in anyway. <laughs> Supernatural. More of that supernatural stuff. All right. Cosmic geography. We're jumping into chapter five. There's some amazing stuff that's unfolding here. We got things happening. We've got the, the original sin, which we we're familiar with. So there's a whole deal with perfect place, garden, paradise. God set this thing up so that people could have a um, great idea of how the world is to be. And he's, he said, "Just I'm going to uh, take care of you here. You get to see it now." Your job is to take this out into the world. Have more babies. Let's fill the world with people and and make this whole planet a garden. Y'all y'all get busy. And they said, no, thanks. And went another direction. Uh, they had uh, somebody off, you know, come along and, and uh, give them a, an option. So they decided to go with that. So we've got that original issue and the breakdown that begins there uh, follows with these beings as, as you've been reading through this who have now rebelled against the, the Lord and that initial rebellion we don't know but we have a, uh, a player the serpent who has led them astray and then we have the rebellion in chapter 6, where they come to earth, they are creating their own beings and you know, all the guesswork of maybe they were jealous of what God was up to because they, went, they kind of went sideways and they wanted to have, if he's going to have kids like him, then they're going to have kids like them and you know, who, all of that's going on. But chapter 6 was like, we wind up with the Nephilim and we've got a whole different thing that that leads to more and more evil. And that whole reading between chapter 3 and before you get to 6, well, right after the rebellion there, everybody's heart is turned to evil in chapter 6. And that's 5, 6, uh, verses 5 and 6. And so you're into a whole new way of thinking, and God's going, we got to clean this up. So then the flood. You know, we build a boat, <clears throat> get a few people out who still believe in him, trust him, and let's start over. So we, we've got that whole start over thing, which gets us to post-flood, and we've got the whole new crowd of people coming along, and the earth is filling up again uh, as they're having children. And, and we've got, you know, knowing his kids, they're still living hundreds of years, so they're having lots of kids. I mean, there's lots of kids' things going on. Noah's still around to talk to these guys. I mean, this isn't like... You know, we don't really know what happened back then. <clears throat> Just imagine your great, great, great grandfather telling you what was going on back then. You know, you're sitting around having dinner and you're getting that story from him. <laughs> wow. So this is, you know, these guys have been told, I want you to fill the earth and spread out, you know, let's go do some things. And they said, no thanks. We're going to build a tower. Tower being another high place uh, like the Garden of Eden and on a mountain. So let's build something up to God and and we will have him, we will tell him when to come, we'll tell him what we want. 
I don't know, but there's a theology that floats around. Uh, well, different religions do it, but within Christianity that says, I want to tell God how to do this. I, I want him to know I want to be healthy and wealthy and uh, be at the top of the heap on everything. I'm just going to, I'm just going to rebuke the devil and I'm going to claim it. And it's all mine. You go, I think, I think we've seen that one before. <laughs> Don't do that. You want to speak some other language, just so it's just a, it, it sets them up, and and there's a whole uh, pattern that that comes out of that. The chapter ten, and and you've got this in your reading, but the chapter ten is the table of nations. So those nations are where, and it's cool to track it. You can see where people went and when they left. Uh, the new genetics DNA stuff that's coming come along tracks that stuff. It's really cool. So you can see where people wound up and then when they moved and when they intermixed and and man, we're just on the front end of tracking a bunch of that. But it follows chapter 10, which is like, okay, we've had this book a while. This is kind of cool. So we've got information about where these where the people went and so the idea is that there are 70 nations, sometimes in the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament done about 250 BC. That one, when they counted, they came to 72. So if you see the number 70, 72, dealing with the nations, that's referring back to the tower. That's dealing with the nations that existed when this happened. So chapter 10 in Genesis. In chapter 11, they build a tower, and God says, no, we're not doing it that way, and go back and take care of things. And then he divides them among his, he's got a, a cohort of, of divine beings who are, uh, these are not low level. These are big, these are, these are heavy duty beings who are going to take responsibility for the nations. So 70, he divides them up, and so now they're going to go out and be uh, participating in the things that, that they're supposed to help the, the nations, these, these group, and nations is, uh, refers to any, any people group, so it's not the same as the dark borders on our maps when we're looking at geopolitical things on a map, it's not that, it's these groups of, of people. And, and they can be grouped in any, uh, it can be languages and cultures, and I mean, by the time it gets to us, but there's, so there's 70 of them, 70 uh, sons of God who are going to take responsibility for this. And again, they, somebody goes sideways. Well, all 70 go, you know, we want, we want to be worshiped. We want to be the center of this. And so when you read Psalm 82, you come up with, these guys didn't do what they were supposed to do. They didn't want to point the people to God. They wanted the attention themselves, and they weren't providing justice. They were doing some crazy other, other um, self, um, you know, I guess self-centered is part of it, but they wanted to be worshiped and, and have the, all the things to themselves. So when you read through Greek mythology, Roman uh, uh, pantheons, gods of Egypt, the gods of China, I mean, you can pick any culture, any nation, anywhere, and you go, wow, look at these guys. They took over the people, they, they demanded worship, demanded things, and their sacrifices, and I mean, you, you go with the Aztec thing, you can go anywhere in the world, and it's going to be that same thing, and there are these major players in that. And if you read 80, Psalm 82, you know, they will die. <coughs> that hasn't happened. That doesn't happen until Jesus comes back and takes over. So there's a lot going on in these, uh, in these chapters and all that that's unfolding. So how did it, how did it uh, sound to you when you read through all of those things there in this crazy chapter on cosmic geography? Did all of the council 
Did any remain faithful? Or oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So some of them who are overseeing areas are still faithful to God, and that's... No. Of no. those who, the 70, okay. no. Not a one of them. No. But that is... A, because right, there are others. Others, that yeah, that he didn't assign. But the ones he assigned, and that's why Deuteronomy 32 says, but he has Israel as his own, his own possession. So he called, decided, I'm going to build my own nation out of Abraham and Sarah. So that whole, yeah, that the other guys went their own way. And that doesn't mean he doesn't have a whole bunch of, on his team, because every time we're, we see him in, in uh, the throne, and then there's the multitude of multitudes of the angelic host who were there. So, yeah, they didn't all go, but the 70 did. And we know there's another player before that. And, and then these guys, and a bunch of them are chained up in Tartarus, so it's not so good down there. And then we've got the demons that kind of got stirred up here, and then these guys who are playing these other, a, a different bunch of gods. Yeah, oh my gosh. So is it crazy enough yet? <laughs> kind of like the Hatfields and the McCoys going on here. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Which side's West Virginia? Yeah, well, anyway. This is crazy stuff, though. And it's, you know, he's trying to deal with, he's trying to help people uh, come back to him. He wants to find uh, people who would be faithful, who will worship him, who will, who will listen to God, who provides all things, who, who is ultimately, well, he's the creator, but he's the one who's bringing real life. And these nations, the people, are willing to go with the, the stories that they're hearing from these other beings and then from other people because those stories get written down and then you go, well sure, that just makes sense let's take Joe here and up on, you know Aztecs, let's just take him up there on Wednesday and we'll cut his heart out while he's watching and sacrifice him and you're going it just doesn't make sense that that would be a good thing to do and yet people around the world go yeah Let's go support that. <coughs> and, uh, and then God comes along and says, you don't have to sacrifice your son. I'll sacrifice mine. I don't know. He seems to be, you know, one to listen to here and all this stuff. So they didn't want to be scattered. That was part of the, uh, the deal. Still, still a part of uh, what we are to do. So, they were supposed to take the ideas of walking with God and go out, you know, have babies, fill the earth with people, and then go out and let them know the one true God and, and what he was up to. And they didn't move quick. Interestingly, if you read through the book of Acts, Jesus said, I want you guys to go out and let people know that I've come, that there's hope, that there's a way. And they stuck around. And they centered in Jerusalem. And then there was a persecution. <clears throat> and when that persecution happened and it got intense, Stephen dies. So after chapter 7 in Acts, they did that. <clears throat> because people don't always want to move forward and scatter and do God says, I've got something for others, and I want you to go do this. I don't know. I think I, I feel comfortable here. You know, like, like my recliner and <laughs> carpet and stuff. And anyway, he's just saying, no. I want some people to know. Know these things. So it's happened more than once, but it definitely happened here. They decided, no, we're not going to leave. We're going to pull together. We're going to build a city, and we'll just tell God how we want it. Well, that didn't go well. I think it's cool that he invented that many languages, like, instantaneously. Let's go, that is amazing. Yeah, nobody else could do that, could they? No! <laughs> These guys invent, like, Elvish, and they, uh, 
and Klingon. And I mean, they, there are real invented languages. And, and you go, he did it like that. And he just sends them out. So I'm guessing there's 70 of them. I don't know that. How many languages, but I'm guessing that it makes sense. Anyway, maybe 70 all at once. That's just cool. Those other languages <coughs> that are developed, um, they have to develop over time and they are limited compared to what God developed. Yeah. Just all at once. All at once, yeah. And some of these, so like the languages are so different from each other. So it's just, it's just way cool. You know, we're surprised we're even. I'm surprised we're still here because out of a whole earth, only Noah was the only one left. Imagine if he was corrupt, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we wouldn't be talking at all. No, I know. <laughs> and then when they let the people out, uh, Israelites out from Egypt out and. He got frustrated because they wouldn't follow him. He thought he'd just kill them all. Yeah, <laughs> start know. over again. <clears throat> yeah. I know, it just keeps coming. Just how, long, how long after the <coughs> flood to, to the tower? Like, what was it, 400 years? Something like that. I do not have never, I haven't, okay. I just, that's something that come to mind. Is, so they had plenty of time to <coughs> start repopulating the earth again. Yeah, very much. I'm thinking it was a short time. It, it, uh, no one is uh, four, uh, four sons, three sons. And, uh, I thought it was a small, a small group. There's, there's a, yeah, there's a number of people. And you think from the stories of, of the flood and and these kids are growing up, the kids and the grandkids would have seen results of that. And it just, <clears throat> I think that'd be enough to say, don't do that again. Nope. You know, I see God's point of view, but I don't cannot see the other side's point of view because they all want you to worship them. Well, you know, which which one you want? I mean, there's it's crazy. They're going to be fighting. Well, I want more worship. You're getting, it's, it's chaos. <laughs> I mean, it would never work. I mean, I don't understand what their game plan is. It's, I guess it's kind of like what the United States is doing now. <laughs> no law or all kinds of yeah. Things. People are hard-headed, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> People are hard-headed. Yeah, and the, the chaos thing, remember the themes out of uh, coming out of Egypt, the, the, when God is coming along, he's dealing with the anti-chaos, his presentation, his, what he is bringing to them. So that whole idea of mot, of death, of chaos, of things just coming apart is a theme that keeps showing up. And it... Each of the gods, Egyptian gods, are there, and the Pharaoh, because he's, you know, semi God representing God on earth, is, and, and the, the uh, activity of the Nile, what's happening in the weather, all related to chaos. It's how do we deal, how do we manage chaos? So, yeah, chaos is huge. To me, it's like driving a fancy car down a real fancy road and it's real attractive, but you're heading to a cliff and you're just going to go right off over it because it's just a dead end road. And they're okay with it. Yeah, and uh, that's fine. It's a cliff. I'm going to go off of it. Yeah. Know? It's crazy. I'm going to take my friends. <laughs> no, I know. We'll all go. Sense. Here's a six pack. Let's yeah. Go. Yeah. Good night. Yeah, he's offering something totally different in all of this. And to get little. Uh, hints at this, look, you know, looking back, and you go, wow, this is, um, it's not like this was unknown. This, the, these things were in a variety of cultures. The flood story is in all around the world. <clears throat> the, uh, the reality of, of the one true God. If you read through Eternity in Their Hearts, that book, uh, it, which is dealing with missions, but he's, he's, Approaching that from the idea that God planted eternity in these in, in people's hearts, which is Ecclesiastes three eleven. But he's he's saying that around the world, people know have known that, that the one true God exists, and they have pushed back and they've been led astray by these other beings. But through that, that there are stories that still exist where the people's reality goes back they they remember in their history in their people's history 
a time when they worshiped the one true God and then they separated and they'll tell that story. One of them I remember is they're headed across to the east from the Middle East and they're headed the, the, and, and they're spreading out these tribes or groups of people and they came to the mountains and they didn't know how to get from Pakistan into India. They, did, they weren't called that, but they were headed that direction. And they couldn't find a way through. And the mountains were too impassable. So they cried out to the local gods, to whoever, because they, they knew there were local gods. So they just reached out to the local gods. And they got an answer that said, here, you can go through this. It's Khyber Pass. So they go through and they get over to India. And so, but the deal was, you have to worship me. So that's, and they go, yeah, we gave that up. Well, the missionaries show up and go, well, here's the one, well, we can't do that because, you know, we told this guy back when. And then they, they give them the, you know, the truth that greater is he than those guys. And they come to the Lord. And some of these have these stories that go so far back and then they hear about Jesus coming, the sun coming, and they go, we've heard that there was a sun from back wherever in their story, in their, in their history, and they, a whole tribe will come to Christ. And like, bam! And you go, yeah, because it's already built into their, their DNA, and that's who they are as a people. But they were worshiping these other gods, and then they run into another god as they cross, like the mountains, here's another one who represents, I guess, India area, be nice if we had area codes for these guys where they are. But anyway, some, something's down that way, and that that's good. Anyway, you want cool stories? Read read some of that. But those are these guys were doing mission work in the '60s and '70s of the last century. So we're jumping time here, so in case you're wondering. Uh, let's see where what else we got. exactly what Paul says. He says his purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. Just waiting. Wow. Yeah, that is so good, yeah. It's just waiting. Yeah. And that's what the intellectuals in, at the Areopagus in Athens, when he tells them that. It's like, okay, you guys. The real God is here. He's available. And, yeah, they didn't like it. <laughs> A few people in Athens came to Christ. The rest of them ran him off again. Just go, wow. Opportunity was there. What about the dirt story? That was me. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta pack up the dirt and take it with you. <coughs> yeah, because it's a, a the geographical aspect of this that that Israel really has been set aside by God for a purpose, and geographical Israel has been set aside for a purpose. And David knew it. Naaman comes into town. It's just that's how it goes, and. There's a, a whole lot uh, that happens at Mount Hermon, uh, north of the uh, Sea of Galilee, and that, and there's interaction, uh, there's so many things, I'm going to get into that, but there's so many things happening there. So here's a geographical place, a mountain, that is uh, key to understanding a whole lot of what God is doing and the battle that's raging between these forces, these different divine beings, what God is doing, what the divine beings have been up to. And uh, Heiser writes another book called Reversing Hermon, and dealing with more detail on, on all those things. But there's dirt, there's geography, there's a place, there's an uh, actual location on earth. Something happened, 
and he's marking it and he's giving, <coughs> providing that, that information. So it is, it's, it's pretty cool. Is that still, even though we maybe don't understand it because the Jews, I mean, most Jews rejected Christ as the Son of God, but isn't that place still, He's still special? Use it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and that's part of why we He's coming stand back. behind Israel. I mean, we don't want anything to happen to his, his place. And why it's know, it's such a threat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But size of New Jersey, such a threat to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just go, man, every, Iran wants to blow them, in, you know, from the river to the sea. Everybody's, yeah, want to destroy them. <clears throat> yeah. But there's no spiritual beings behind any of this. It's just, you know, just, yeah. Prince of Persia, Iran, is still active. This thing is not done yet. Not until Jesus comes back. And getting thrown out, the authorities, the powers, the things that happen. So that's, this is in that same thing, page 53, where he's talking about, so what do you do with the, this guy who's involved in unrepentant sexual sin in 1 Corinthians 5? Why do you deliver him to Satan? So where is he? Outside of the congregation, because that's sacred space. And you got to move that guy out there, because he's living in sin, that's where that happens. And, uh, and correct them. Because the second letter, the second Corinthians, he's saying, you guys, you know, the guys are coming back around, bring them back in, <laughs> don't leave them out there. So you send them out. And I know you've heard or seen those situations in churches, and they go, well, we're going to, you know, you're out of here. And you go, yeah, but they're mean to them. The whole idea is to bring people to repentance and bring them back. It's not, you know, send them out and crush them. Anyway. But it is a good uh, indication of that, that, that the church now represents that holy space and, uh, and, and ought to be treated properly, which is what he's addressing. <coughs> I don't think you have to take dirt from the church, though. Take it home. Yeah, I think it's, it's good. In Galatians, he, he hits in Galatians, the real children of Abraham, this is only 54, are those who put their faith in God. You're all children of God through faith in Christ. And then he goes through that whole thing of, okay, we're, we're, we're new in him, and no longer all of these things that divide, Jew, Gentile, slave, free, male, female, all the different things. He's saying, no, you're, you're, and it doesn't mean that that all goes away and you're just one big puddle, but it's like it's all you are now uh, part of what God is, God is doing and with Abraham the promise was given in Genesis 12 which follows, you know, just right on the heels Genesis 12 is the beginning of this whole thing, he's gonna, that's the promise that brings all the nations back together so all the nations are split here and in 12 here's Abraham I'm going to send somebody through Abraham. This nation is mine, and I'm going to bring people, all the nations back. It wasn't about, here's my group. The heck with the rest of you. No. Here's my, here's my nation, and I'm going to reveal myself through them so that the rest of the nations can see who I am compared to all these other so-called, the other gods, and uh, bring them back. So... And then he sends the Messiah. So that's and kind that's of what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. We get to live in such a way that we way shine. That we and, yeah. Yeah. and when we don't. Yeah. Hmm. We get to provide that and the hope. Provide hope. <coughs> uh, let's see. Okay, then... Any, anything more on the Nate kind of got that this whole nation's geography okay I did like his point the lesson is that this world is not our home <laughs> <laughs> that's Amen. what was said in, uh, in, uh, in 
met the second second chapter of eight fifty five. Right. Yeah. It also says down here that the external appearances in buildings and the size of the congregation are no concern to God. What matters is that where two or three are gathered, Jesus is in the midst. Mm -hmm. That's better. Yes. The next chapter he did, he's dealing with the word, the name, and the angel. So that should have been fun. If you're looking through, trying to sort some things out. Because, uh, oh, there's so many things in that one. But so, Hashem is the, that means the name. And so, in Hebrew, that would be the way, if you're referring to the Most High, you're referring to Yahweh, or God, they will substitute Lord, and you'll see it in your Bible, instead of Yahweh, they'll put Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, and so it's a way of substituting that, and for the uh, Israel, or the Jewish people through the years, when they translate, or make comments, they often would use Adonai, Lord instead to, to instead of saying the name because that is so powerful and to know his name and to say his name to be called by his name I mean all of, all of those things are related to his authority his power, his position, his person it is all of it so even when they say in his name or by his name or using his name Hashem so if you hear that somewhere, that, that's what they're referring to. That's the, uh, that is the highest place, uh, highest honor is to be connected to and related to him. When they translate and they get to those places in the, when they were translating by hand and they get to those places, they would stop before they got to Yahweh, to his name, they would wash their hands. They would come back. They would, this is very serious. And they write. Then they get up and they wash their hands and they come back. And it's just a process because they're honoring the name because it's such a big deal. So to do these things in the name of the Lord is, for us, it's like, nah, not for them. And not, not from the Lord's perspective either. This, this is huge. So, yeah, the name, the word, so that one, and you've probably seen it First John, or John chapter 1 and First John chapter 1. And you'll see it in Greek, often logos, and that has to do with the, uh, in, in commentaries of Bible, even most of your Bible, study Bibles, if you look in the notes, it will track Logos to Greek, to uh, second, third century Greek, BC Greek um, philosophers. The idea of, of the Logos, and <clears throat> we don't need to go down that bunny trail, but anyway, there's a side of this that they said that influenced what John was writing because he's writing um, to correct some Greek philosophy that had, had entered into the church. And so when you read this chapter from Heiser, you're going, now this is what they understood the word to be in the first place. This is that word, which in the, the Bibles that they were typically using, because they did use the Hebrew, but they also had easy access, and we're often using the Septuagint, the Greek translation, because that's the language of the day. Greek translation, which would have been Logos. So when God shows up and is speaking, and he arrives to talk to his people in these different locations, different times, he is called the Word. The Word appeared. You go, typically when you say word, you heard the word. The word doesn't just appear. So the Logos actually is a being in human form, standing and talking to them like when 
1 Samuel 3, when little Samuel is in the tabernacle working and the Lord keeps calling, when he finally realizes it's the Lord, he says, Lord, speak, you know, I'm listening. And he's standing there. It's not just a voice. He's standing in the tabernacle talking to Samuel. And you go, oh, okay. So what John is talking about is the word that was represented in his history recorded in the Old Testament and he's saying that word that's here I don't give a rip about the Greek philosophers that word is here that word has come and the one who talked to Samuel the one who talked to Abraham the one who was walking in the garden in paradise uh, that one is here and, and, and he came walked among us the word became flesh and walked among us so that's getting the word, the name, and the angel. And the angel is the angel of the Lord is, is the Lord Jesus before he was born in Bethlehem. So when you come across that, that's all and sometimes he'll be referred to as the name or the word. And you're going, Oh my gosh, look at him. He's just showing up all over in the Old Testament in a in a variety of ways. And he's there to communicate, he's there to help, he's there to provide. He's uh, sometimes he um, wipes out a bunch of people, and he he's God, and he's there uh, showing up. Uh, and he, he gives the indication that Jeremiah, when he received the word, uh, the Lord touched him with his hand. So it's not just uh, audible voice; something is happening. <clears throat> What do you think about all that? Testament, uh, when he asked, Who should I tell the Egyptian who you are? He goes, I am. Um, but that doesn't refer to one of those. It's just a modern version of I am, I guess. Or, yeah, in the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's the real deal. Yeah, he is showing up. Yeah, all over the place. So he walks with. Uh, <clears throat> Genesis 48 the God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked the God who has been my shepherd all my life along with this to this day the angel who has redeemed me from all evil okay the angel and, and sometimes that word is used interchangeably with, with God Moses is on the mountain and he receives the word from God and he gets the Ten Commandments. The two commandments. He, he's got this handwritten copy of the Ten Commandments given to him, uh, written by the finger of God. Who, when you start putting the pieces together, go, okay, they, he, later he's, it's referred to as he received it from angels or from the angel. And you're going, now what? Well, J Jesus, pre incarnate Jesus. Is standing there writing with his finger in stone, writing out the here's some notes you need to take back down to those guys. And just go, okay, that's pretty cool. So he's hanging out with them face to face, the angel of the Lord. He met him in the burning bush that didn't burn. So he's there because it's referred to as God's in the bush, the angel's in the bush. This is like, what? It's like, either or is where our heads go. And it's not. It's both. Because there's a train of God. In Jewish uh, cosmology, it's the two powers. And they believed in the two Yahwehs. Which they dumped when Christianity showed up. And they said, we just need to get rid of that thinking. Because that agrees with them. <laughs> we just can't have that. 
So that went away about the end of the first century. I like what he said about that he, um, how did he put, he filters his presence so that we can see him. And it might be through fire or cloud or in human form. Yeah. Yeah, we need that. Yeah. Otherwise, we just melt. I saw that in Indiana Jones. Yeah, that's right. You saw that. That looks good. <laughs> yeah, Turn to mush. Yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. Good thing he filters. Yeah. Became flesh. Became flesh and dwelt among us. And we get to do all the things that we're doing in the name of the Lord. What? It's just pretty awesome. We get to reflect his glory. We get to be part of it. Um, and we, I mean, we're, we're in the middle of this thing, which is a clash of the gods, which is part of why he's sharing this supernatural stuff. So we know who God is, who Jesus is, how the Holy Spirit's working, and, and uh, maybe filling in some areas that were unknown before or hazy. So if we can just kind of clear it up a little bit, you know, we can we can worship him yeah, better. And even, you know, you're listening to the news, you can look at it and go, oh, I see. There's some other stuff happening here. There's probably a good, good reason uh, that the guy who flipped out and was this incredible father and husband, everybody said so. And then he just goes through and kills his kids and his wife, kills himself. And there's the 10-year-old who didn't get, didn't get killed, who reported it when he got up in the morning and found them all dead. And he calls 911. That just happened. Why would a perfectly happy family, with this guy being a part of it, go that direction? There are evil forces who come along and help I mean, it doesn't mean that we don't have breakdowns mentally and other things happen, but all the evidence around surrounding this family was happy, healthy, doing well, till that day. You know, so what pushed that button? Why is it that people all of a sudden they seem to be doing just fine, they're just on top of the world, and then they drive their car into the bridge of Button? Where does it come from? It's the enemy and the darkness and and why would one come, country decide, you know, what if those guys are having too much fun at that concert over there, let's just go over there and kill them. Where does that kind of stuff come from? And it's just part of it, the battle's on. Maybe. Hey, Rand, can I ask you a dumb, or maybe it's off the wall question, but uh, I guess all of it's kind of off the wall, but anyway, <laughs> uh, the the angels are jealous of us. They want us to praise them, and they and they're actually kind of jealous of us, and they're trying to disrupt all of God's plan. And we're made a little lower than the angels now, but later we're going to be above the angels when we're in in heaven. Are we going to be be above the council? Mm -mm. No, the council's still above us. We get to be. And we get to be part of the council. Uh huh. Yeah. So we're going to be the council. We we'll get with, to be with, part. We we'll get to be part of some things. But the council now is spiritual beings, but different than the angels. Well, the the, the divine be there's a there's a multitude of divine beings. So there's all kinds of them, and some of them have. Six wings, some don't. Some there's a variety of divine beings, and so on that, and that council, God has a, a variety of different uh, these different beings gathered with him, and he has, uh, you know, charged some of them, or he gives them things to do. So they come down here, and that's where the word angel comes from, because they're on assignment. So they are coming to. Uh, accomplish something. You know, some of them are here to take notes, see if we actually talk about the Lord. They that's why when you start the book of Job, because where you been? And it's a council scene, God's talking to them. I've been going to and fro throughout the earth. So what'd you find out? 
because that's what some of the council members are doing. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, you know, I've got this guy down, this Job guy. And so that is how that starts, how the book starts. You know, it's a council scene that, that shows that they're involved, that they that God has them down here. And he's actually checking because he says, you know, take notes. That's Malachi 3.16. Are you guys talking about me? Or are you just talking about how horrible life is and mm -hmm. your boss didn't promote you and you know, all the important stuff. So, so was that Satan and Job? Who no. approached? No, it was just a one that had turned though, right? Mm -hmm. So he's just, because it seems like he's trying to set up Job to fail. That yeah. doesn't seem nice. True. Yeah, I thought it was Satan. I did too. I totally So the guy comes and he gives a report on Job and he's accusing him. So that's the report that he gives. To, to God in the council, so he is the accuser. He is not, because we don't say the Satan, he is, but in the text, the only time he's, he's named as, and that's how we get this information is in Revelation 12, where he ties it together. The serpent is never called Satan, he's never called Lucifer, he's never called the devil. In Genesis 3, he's, he's a serpent. So you get in Revelation 12 where it pulls it all together and says, this is him. This is the, the dragon of old, the serpent. This is the devil. And he puts, it, puts these things together in terms of where he fits. And it wasn't every time this word is used because it's just a title. Or just, he's an accuser. But when the name becomes proper, properly used or applied to that being, that singular being, isn't until uh, first century uh, BC, kind of leading up to Jesus' time. So by the time the, the writing in the New Testament, they are using, they still use it as, as an accuser word in Hebrew, but they're also using it as a as a name to for a being who's causing all kinds of trouble. So. So was he on the council, or he did he just come before the council and say, "I and I know the." I know he shows up at the council, so right. Yeah. He's just there at the council. Meeting. But he had a job, and the job was to go. Yeah, and the, the others have jobs, and that's angel means sent out with a message, sent out as a, uh, with a something that God wants done. You're supposed to go do it, and so these and they're called angels. I mean, that's just. So humans can be angels, you know, just, just by virtue of following through on something that God's given us to do or say or, uh, you know, and so they're reporting back to him. That's what we get from Job 1 and, and other um, accounts too. But anyways, the, the accuser thing, the, the one who's opposed to us, the one who's coming against us, that's who this guy is. And so at that point, he's bringing up, well, what about this joke? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So why, it, was, so why was why was he even at the council if he's a, an accuser? I mean, he's not he's not a good guy. I mean, I think, you're out of here, buddy, or we don't even listen to you. But because God is okay with them bringing up questions. Why is this guy all right? But he's testing us like all the time, you know, like yeah. with Abraham and his son, and and, and he's testing Job. And uh, as uh, you see that on YouTube, a guy will say, "Is your boyfriend faithful?" And they'll have a another girl try to flirt, you know, because they're testing you. Well, what kind of stuff do you look at? That's all over YouTube. YouTube is another word for Satan. But, but, <laughs> but I mean, it's like this. YouTube. You're being tested. <laughs> but but anyway, it, it just. I don't like all them tests. I love Jesus, but I don't want to sit there and be put into fire all the time. I mean, I'll serve him, do what he wants, but I don't know. Just, just tell him that. It's, 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 I'll be over here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it just seems like, like they're trying to trick us all the time, you know. I don't know. 
Well, there aren't beings, who, but their job is to go see. So if, if we were failing, that should be pointed out. So they, you know, and he says it's keeping notes. Yeah. So I, I guess it'd be better to be accused and mess up and straighten out and then go on the right road than to lose really? it at the end. Job is doing pretty good. Yeah. And he got better. Yeah. And he got better. Got better. Yeah. So that backfired in the accuser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if he got crushed or. But he got kind of beat up over the deal about were you here when the dinosaurs and all this here? You couldn't do that. You didn't know the dimensions and all this stuff. So, and I thought, yeah, I, Job's a pretty good guy, I thought. <laughs> Yeah, but that's that's where all of us need to yeah. realize that he's God and we're not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we need to answer that question. Yeah. So if you're so smart, where were you when I made this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that kind of puts us back where we belong. So we don't wind up being one of these guys. Mm -hmm. that. All right. Well, let's do a couple more chapters next time. Like seven, eight. Steve, why don't you pray for us? Okay. We'll close this one out. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we can come together and fellowship and, and focus on you, Lord. It's all about you, Lord Jesus. And we're just uh, learning more about the, the spiritual side that uh, making us more aware of it, uh, more in tune with it. And uh, it's really, uh, really pretty wild. But we love you, Lord, and we want you in our lives. We want to serve you, and you're an awesome God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And we just thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 In the name we pray. In the name. That's all of a sudden more. <laughs>